Or maybe a rough mug of jet black Colombian blend. Are you feeling all right? Coarsely ground and percolated through superheated steam until its full roguish flavor is released, roaring like a wild animal. <laughs> What instant do? Betty, I want real coffee. That is real coffee. It's real instant coffee. Where are the fancy stuff? Betty, real coffee is not fancy stuff. It is a drink to be appreciated. A cherished friend to share those quiet, peaceful times. Betty, you can't just waste these things. Oh, it's not. It's not. It's not. It's not. <laughs> it's not. It's not. <laughs> You're right. Instant, would you? All right. All right. All right. What is it? <gasps> Time. Oh, you, you. Another new shampoo you just bought. You mean the expensive one, the one you both wanted? The one with hello, hello, what's all this then in it? <laughs> you used it. I only got it two days ago. I did not use it all, you used it all. I did not, I've only washed my hair three times. Oh, I've only washed my hair three times. Well, I've got news for you both. I haven't washed my hair at all. <laughs> ben, that's no news. So you two have monstered the lot? I have to wash my hair every day. So do I. Well, not at $8 a bottle, you don't. Yeah, that's right. I mean, you don't see me wasting half my life in the bathroom. Yes, what is this thing with teenagers and bathrooms? What thing? Well, this lot I can't get out of the shower, and you, I can't get in there. <laughs> uh, Betty, before I forget, could you book me that ticket to Canberra? I'll need it this weekend. Oh, certainly, Mr. Russell. How should I pay for it? No? Oh, uh, well, you can uh, just put it on my card. Very well. Ooh! Yes, it's my new card. Mr. Russell. My new gold card, my new gold. We don't give those out to just anybody, card. Oh, yes, very shiny. Oh, I think I smudged it. What? <laughs> Take down the details. Oh. So what was wrong with your old card? Well, nothing was wrong with it. I just thought it was time for a change, that's all. Oh, it's funny. It never strikes me as being a sort of gold card type. What do you mean, gold card type person? Well, you know, a show-off. <laughs> Betty, having a gold card is not showing off. It's a symbol of achievement, of being successful. A recognition that your career has reached a certain status. Showing off. Well, I wouldn't expect you to understand. Oh, now, now, I'm sorry, Mr. Russell. Well, why did you get it? No, I told you. Yeah, but why did you really get it? <laughs> because everyone else had one. Ha-ha, <laughs> I knew it. No, it's not like that. I went out to lunch with some colleagues a couple of weeks ago, and when they all put their gold cards on the table, all I had was my scungy, dog-eared old bank card. The waiter sneered at it. What, they wouldn't accept it? No, they would accept it, but he sneered at it anyway. Well, what about the gold cards? Oh, he smiled at them. The place wouldn't accept them, but he smiled. <laughs> You're telling me, I had to put the whole bill on my bank card. Well, they'll pay me back, of course. Oh, anyway, it got me thinking, if everyone else has a gold card, I want one too. So would I, if you get out of paying for lunch. Yeah, pardon? <laughs> <laughs> I just thought it was time for a gold card. That's oh, speaking of time, ooh, you said to tell you when it was 11.30. Yes. That was five minutes ago. What? <laughs> I better get going. I've got to meet John Stanley at the site. Now, um, you will remember to send those revised plans to the council, won't you? Uh, and uh, send his secretary the estimate. Uh, right, Mr. Russell. Everything done a good call. Right, that's about everything. I'll see you later, Betty. Bye. I almost left home without it. <laughs> cappuccino maker it's for the office oh well you mean we're not allowed to use it oh that's fair yeah that's right yeah what about us what about you you don't even live here <laughs> well, of course you can use it but it stays in the office oh, well i think it's fantastic yeah, well if you think that's good cast your eye over this my new electronic organizer oh, give it a look greg hey not bad have you got donkey Kong on it <laughs> are you still here <laughs> Are you all right? All right, yeah, of course I'm all right. Why do you ask? Well, going out and spending money, it's just not like you. Yeah, that's right. Tracy always said you're as tight as a fish's ass. <laughs> uh, uh, I always thought you were allergic to parting with your hard-earned cash. I didn't pay cash for them. 
Please, you stole them. It's not my stuff. Stop. I used my credit card, my new gold card. Well, even so, Greg, it still would have cost a bob or two. No, I'll just pay them off. Besides, because they're for the office, they are tax deductible. Really, Dad, I'm impressed. This gold card's really working. You're turning into a regular businessman. Fluffy coffee, anyone? That's not fair. I don't drink coffee. Oh, well, you can have a fluffy tea instead. <laughs> no, I wasn't. God, look at this electricity bill. Whee! Look at all those zeros. That's the meter reading. That's the total. Oh, it's pretty high, isn't it? Well, it's higher than an audience at a Grateful Dead concert. Why don't you complain? Complain? Yeah, how dare they charge us so much? Because we use so much. Because you use so much. Us? Yes, I know what you lot are like. You've always got your dryers and your heaters and your other pile of draining appliances cranked up to the max. Well, but it's weak. We need heaters and things. No, but that's no reason to waste power. My thoughts exactly, Greg. Well, thank you, Dan. Uh, see, now, I hope you two have learned something. Ah. Yes. Maybe you'll think twice before you go wasting power with your heaters and hair dryers and curling wands and the like. There are other ways. We need all those things. <laughs> Women. <laughs> I think we're being patronised here, Jenny. Uh, you know what I mean, Greg? Yeah, not being understand out of this. You know, you could uh, learn a thing or two from men. Men. Uh-oh, I'm getting out here before things get ugly. <laughs> Watch myself. You see, unlike you two, I have no need of creature comforts. My needs are simple. Food to give me nourishment and shelter from the storm. And a regular worming once a year. Not <laughs> if you like, Tracy. <clears throat> but like my Spartan ancestors, I have no need of pampered luxury. What about your electric blanket? I said luxury, not necessity. <laughs> well, you wait power with that. Oh, Jenny, Jenny, Jenny. How could I possibly do that? You have it on 24 hours a day. You what? <laughs> There's a very good reason for that. You see, a uh, Spartan never knows when he may need a nap. <laughs> oh. Listen, Tracy, um, if Mick rings, can you tell him that I'll meet him down the club at nine? Sure. <laughs> about Greg, eh? <laughs> he does go overboard sometimes, doesn't he? What do you mean? What's going on about my electric blanket? And you haven't got it on again. Of course. And when he doesn't know, it won't hurt him. It's Ben. Ah. No one will come between me and my lecky blanket. <laughs> mm, and unless you change your personal hygiene habits, no one ever will. <laughs> saying that we shouldn't be wasting electricity. We have one thing plugged in at a time when we need it. Yeah, yeah. You do know that global warming is directly related to the burning of fossil fuels? Yeah. But the way I see it is, the more fuels we burn, the warmer it gets, the less I'll need my electric blanket, the less electricity I'll use. Huh? My way of doing my bit for the environment. <laughs> ah, wonderful. A nice hot shower, a cup of nice warm milk. Now I can go and jump into my beautiful warm bed. <laughs> sure is cold tonight. get my milk to fluff. <laughs> well, maybe it's broken. It's not broken. Ben got it to fluff, Jenny got it to fluff, even Arthur got the thing to work. Oh, damn, it's still flat. Well, maybe you're doing it wrong. Well, of course I'm doing it wrong. I don't need you to tell me I'm doing it wrong. Well, why don't you just have flat white? I paid $400 for an imported cappuccino maker, not a flat white maker. Well, but really... No, no, no. Why not? I couldn't take that chance. What chance? If you could do it too, I'd be totally humiliated. <laughs> As you wish. Um, you want me to ring Mr. Stanley's office? Have you got the number there? Ah, uh, yes. I'll, uh, just consult my new electronic organizer. Ha <laughs> ha, well. Well, what? Well, what do you think? Well, frankly, I'm a little disappointed. What do you mean? Well, I turned my battery second and you're out buying toys. <laughs> this is not a toy. This is a highly sophisticated, state-of-the-art electronic organizer. Oh, well, it is small. Oh, yes, it is. It's pocket-sized. The ultimate in executive organizing. Oh, okay, then I'll listen. What can you play on it? Yep. <laughs> oh, you know, shiny little fairy with things on the top, you know. It's not an organ. It's an organizer. An electronic diary. I keep my appointments and phone numbers there. Oh, and, uh, and you spent how much of it? 250 For $450 on a diary that goes flat? Oh, boy, I should always draw you coming in, eh? Very. Well, I'm really, Mr. 
up. I mean, if you're going to go around wasting your money... I am not wasting my money. You can't honestly tell me that you need an electronic to organise a thingy and a not-so-fluffy coffee maker. <laughs> well, of course I can do without. There are other things in this office I can do without, too. But unlike those other things in this office, these organisers and coffee-making things do not have long lunches, leave early, or have red hair. <laughs> More importantly, they are tax deductible. Is that good? <laughs> of course it's good. <laughs> You've obviously got a few things to learn about being in business, Betty. All right, Bob. Well, tell me more about this tax deductible thing. Um, does the tax man give you back the money that you spend? Well, not quite, but the amount you spend is taken off your gross earnings, which probably reduces your taxable income by the amount you've spent. Oh, that sounds good. Oh, of course it? it's good. Mm. So, you mean, it, say you spent a thousand dollars on, um, you know, a coffee maker and organizer. Um, how much tax would you save? Well, let's see, on a gross of 50 thou or less of thou, that's, uh, 49. Oh, yeah, tax saving could be as much as 150 dollars. I see. Well, I'm glad. So, you spent a thousand dollars to save 150? Yes. Right. So, let me get this straight. You spend money you can't afford on things you don't need so that even if you take into account as tax saving, it still costs you more than it would have if, if you hadn't bought them in the first place. Yeah. And you think that's good? Yes. And you pay an accountant to tell you this? Yes. <laughs> Why? Because his fee is tax deductible. <laughs> oh boy. And they call us country folks simple. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I'm just freezing. It's like ice at training. Uh, do you want anything from the kitchen? From the kitchen? That reminds me. My jackal should be nearly done. No, uh, just a little longer. <laughs> Not what I always say. Two, four, six, eight, bog in, don't wait. <laughs> no. I always say there's nothing like a baked bean jackal to warm you up. Yeah, there's nothing like gas heating. <laughs> Nobody's in here. What's the TV doing on? And the heater. Who else could it be? Ben! Ben! Yeah? Get out here. Yeah, in a minute. On the double! Right, what is it? That's just what is going on here. Hey? What do you call this? A heater? <laughs> I know it's a heater. I want to know what it's doing on. Heating. <laughs> Boy. Uh, you've got the TV going and the heater on. Don't you remember what Dad told us about having one thing plugged in at a time? Yeah, but... Don't yeah, but me. You weren't even in the room. Well, I was just in the kitchen. Well, if you're in the kitchen, then you don't need the TV and the heater going. Well, I was only out there for a second. But you still weren't in here, were you? Well, no, I wasn't. But and I... if you're not in here, then you don't need these things on, so you should turn them off. Come on, Tracy. You're as bad as Uncle Greg. Well, she's worse than Greg. Greg can be unreasonable, but Tracy's being downright petty. <laughs> Is that a smell? Something's burning. Quick, the kitchen! Oh, no! I'm a jackal! Should have expected this. What? You've got the jackal maker on and the coffee pot. You've got things turned on all over the house. But it's ruined. And look at this. This PowerPoint's turned on and there's nothing plugged in. So? So, mister, there's power pouring out of it. <laughs> and that's not a way to don't know what is. I've got my jackal. Never mind, I'll make you another one. You will not. We've wasted enough electricity on him. But I'll start. Then have a sandwich. But the bread start. Then have a stale bread sandwich. <laughs> then you can't go around plugging things in all over the house. Uh, think of the power you're wasting, not to mention the cost. Don't worry about the cost. Uncle Greg pays for it. <laughs> just a bit over the top. Ben, the world's fossil fuels are a finite resource and you just waste them. How does it sort of be an environmental butcher? Cold and hungry. <laughs> Morning. Morning. What was all that about? Greg, you've got to do something. What are you talking about? Tracy, you've got to talk to her. She's got this obsession with saving power. Please, Greg, talk some sense into her. Well, I don't know, Ben. Saving power doesn't seem like a bad thing to me. Well, it's not. Saving power is good, but she's not just saving power. She's got it on a hunger strike. <laughs> Come on, Ben, how bad she Well, she'll only let you have one thing plugged in at a time. Huh? Will she come and turn the light off if you're not reading? Yesterday she had a go at me because my toast was too brown. <laughs> Greg, it's like living with the power police. All right, I'll have a word with her, but uh, I think you're overreacting. Hey, Jenny, are you all right? Don't worry, Dad. She'll be all right. What are you talking about? What have you done to her? 
I've just taught a little lesson, that's all. What sort of lesson? Oh, be careful, Greg. She's got that look in her eye. <laughs> and what does that thing do? The same look a jellyfish gets right before it wraps its tentacles around its prey. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you knock it off, you two. Now, what have you done to Jenny? What happened to the hot water? Ha! Let that be a lesson to you. Let what be a lesson to me? I turned the hot water off. You did what? That's right. Any more long showers and you'll know what to expect. My God, the woman's going power crazy. And mark me if you will, but any longer than five minutes and off goes the hot water. Ah, uh, but Tracy. I don't. Try and talk me out of it, Dad. I know what I have to do. She's mad. She's gone stark raping bonkers. I refuse to stand by and watch you waste electricity by pouring all that hot water down the drain. It's a gas hot water system. Exactly. <laughs> and it's just as well for you that I knew that because if it was an electric one, then you'd really be in trouble. <laughs> Oh, Greg, have you seen a hairdryer? Oh, sorry, Jenny, I haven't used it. Ben? Don't ask me, I'm not game to use it. Now, have you asked Tracy? Why? Well, I thought she'd sworn off electricity. Well, not completely. Only one thing plugged it in a time, remember? Hi, Dad. I'll go and ask her. Hello, Tracy, around? Don't you mention that name around here? Next no, one, Ben, don't be like that. Oh, and what should I be like, huh? That woman's been hounding me for days. But you have to admit, she is a woman of principle. Principle? Ben, in these cynical times, we too often fail to appreciate people who stand up for what they believe in. Well, yes, but and I mean... Tracy is such a person. You may find this hard to accept, but she deserves help for that. Oh, get it out of it. <laughs> it's true. Certainly her enthusiasm, she may have temporarily alienated you. But never forget, she is motivated to do what she does for greater good. For a more noble cause. And besides... Besides what? She's good for business. Oh. What sort of business? <laughs> Want to buy some power? <laughs> what is that? An extension cord. I run it from my house. And for a small connection fee, plus a retainer to make sure that you know who doesn't find out, I can connect you to the bridge. So what do you say? <laughs> no, that's no fee whatsoever. I can connect you to my foot. Now, Arthur, get out of here. I'm afraid you better come, and you better come quickly. Why, what is it? I can't explain. Just what? come. for this young lady. A very good explanation indeed. Just hear out. You have been lecturing us about saving power and just look at this. Look at what? All these appliances you've got plugged in. Huh? Oh, look, the, the heater, the hairdryer, the TV. The stereo, the hot rollers, the multi zapper. The cappuccino machine. The, the, the cappuccino machine? My cappuccino machine. What are you doing with my cappuccino machine? Making a cappuccino? You mean you can get the milk to fluff too? <laughs> if you don't mind, I would like an explanation. And so would I. Now, is it all to do with how much milk you put in the jug or how far you put the nozzle in the jug? Yeah, it is. Now, how come you've got all these things plugged in, huh? Well, oh, don't you remember what you said about only using one power point? I am only using one power point, see? <laughs> what are you doing? A bit of lateral thinking, Dad. Obviously, one power point only gives out a certain amount of power. I've simply divided that power between all these things. That's pretty good, right? Crazy, it doesn't work like that. Oh, don't be silly. No, you're overloading that socket. Not designed to handle that many appliances. It's really very dangerous. You're putting an incredible strain on the system. What sort of strain? Oh, crazy! That's not strain. <laughs> One new circuit breaker, rewiring the socket, $275. No, Dad, don't blow a fuse. <laughs> I hope you learned a lesson from this. Yes, Dad. False economy is no economy at all. Yes, Dad. And another thing. Yes, Dad. Why do I always finish up paying when other people try to save money around here? Oh, speaking of money, this came for you. It's a bill for your gold card. Right, thank you. $2,200? Oh, yes, I'm not the only one who runs up bills around here. Uh, yes, uh, but unlike you, um, I can handle my finances. Now, this might seem like a large sum, but I shall um, call upon my legendary budgeting powers and simply make the minimum payment. I don't think so. What? Well, you said you'd make the minimum payment, and I said, I don't think so. <laughs> Betty, what are you talking about? Well, this is your gold card, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah, well, you obviously haven't read the fine print, because it's not a credit card, it's a charge card. What? You can't pay the minimum payment. You've got to pay the whole bill immediately. Oh, well. 
Oh, my God, she's right. What am I going to do? I can't afford $2,000. I could always lend it to you. <laughs> you? Well, why not? I've got approximately $3,427.45 in the bank. Approximately. Well, yeah, I always round it up to the nearest five cents. <laughs> $3,427.45. How did you get that much? Don't you know? Jenny's been saving every bit of birthday money, Christmas money, odd job money, ever since she was a little girl. She's very thrifty. It's a title, I like it. I'll be happy to lend some to you, Uncle Greg. You'd pay interest, of course. How's 10%? Per annum. Per week, him. 10% per week? Forget it, that's outrageous. You'll be back at the seller's market. Jenny, even if I wanted to borrow money from you, I couldn't afford it at those interest rates. Who needs to be able to afford it? You can just put it on your card. <laughs> Production for the Seven Network. <laughs>